Hey everyone, today we are going to start a new topic called inequalities. I'm sure you have seen some of these symbols before, but we are going to be talking about them in a little bit of a different light. Um, so I'd like you to take out your notebook and a pencil. And we are going to start with an introduction, an introduction to these symbols. I would like you to make a graph, like a chart in your notebook, with these four symbols in the four corners, just like we have here. And we're going to talk about them and how they're used. So, in the top left, our first symbol here, this is the greater than symbol. And over here we have the less than symbol. Down here, this is greater than or equal to. See that line underneath it? It's kind of like if you took the greater than sign and an equal sign and you smushed them together. That line underneath means or equal to. And over here we have less than or equal to. So what do these four symbols mean? In an inequality, instead of using an equal sign, we use one of these symbols. So this one right here, let's take a look at an example. This inequality says x is greater than 10. So I think some of you learned that this the symbol is like an alligator mouth. The alligator always eats the bigger number. So x is greater than 10. That means what can x be in this example? Well, it has to be greater than 10. So what numbers are bigger than 10? Uh, 11, 12, 13, 500. Any number that's bigger than 10, that's what x can be. x can be any of these numbers, and there are billions of more options, as long as it's bigger than 10. It could even be 10.1, because 10.1 is bigger than 10. So if you see something that looks like this, x is greater than 10, that means x could be 11, 12, 13, or any of those numbers. Let's take a look at an example with less than. X is less than 10. And actually, I'm going to type it because it's a little bit easier. So what does that mean X could be? X could be, well, anything that's less than 10. It could be 9, 8, 7, 6. X could be 0. X could be negative 1, negative 2. And X could be anything that's smaller than 10. X could even be 9.9, 9.9, because 9.9 is smaller than 10. So all of those numbers would work for X in this example. Down here we have, oh, where's my pointer? X is greater than or equal to 10. So what could X be in this problem? Well, it can be any of the numbers that we set up here, but it could also equal 10. That's what that means. That's what this symbol means. It means that X could be 10, and then it could also be 11 or 12 or 13 or so on, anything that's bigger than the number 10. But so in, when we have this symbol, that means we can include 10. 10 is a possibility. Same thing over here. If I say x is less than or equal to 10, that means that x could be 10 or 9 or 8 or 7 or 6 or 5 or so on. Anything that's less than 10. But because we have this symbol with the line underneath, that means it could also equal 10. So that's a little example of what these four symbols mean. Now we're going to talk about how we use them here in sixth grade math. Inequalities on a number line. Flashback to number lines that we did in the very, very beginning of the year. We're going to be bringing them back. So when we have inequalities, there's a lot of different answers. Like I showed you on the first page, x could be a lot of different numbers billions of different answers. So instead of writing them all out, which would be impossible, we put our answers on a number line. 
x is greater than 6. Let's put 6 on the number line. Okay. Um, let's put some numbers around 6. What's after 6? 7, oh, 8, 9 would be over here, 10, and before 6 is 5, and then 4, 3, and so on. You could fill in more numbers to fill up the entire number line, but you don't have to. As long as you have a couple numbers, it's okay. So now how do we show the answers for x is greater than 6? Well, we already talked about what this means. What numbers could x be? If x has to be greater than 6, that means x could be 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. So on my number line, which direction is that? That's this direction. All of the numbers going in this direction are possible answers. So we circle 6 because that's the number we're talking about. And then we draw an arrow to the right to show that all of these numbers on the number line are possible solutions for this inequality. Let's try another one. X is less than 13. Well, first, let's start by putting 13 on the number line. And we can fill in some other numbers to go around it so that we have an idea of where we're going to want this arrow to go. X is less than 13. What numbers are less than 13? 12, 11, 10, 9, and so on. So if I was going to graph this on a number line, I'm circling 13, that's the number we're starting with, and which way would I point my arrow? I would have to point it to the left because the left is all of the numbers that are less than 13. All right, right now I want you guys to try number three and four by yourself, and then you can check your answers after you're done. All right, now that hopefully you have done three and four by yourself, let's check. So number three, x is less than 36. Let's put 36 on the number line. And if I'm going to graph it, that means I circle 36. And which direction would show me the numbers that are smaller than 36? To the left. It would be 35, 34, 33. So this is how I would graph my solution for x is less than 36. And for x is greater than 42, I would put 42 on the number line. And then I can circle 42. Greater than 42, that would be these numbers, 43, 44, 45. So I would graph to the right. I would draw my number line, my arrow. So that's my solution for x is greater than 42. Now, I only talked about two different symbols so far. I didn't talk about these symbols yet, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. When I graph these ones, my answer is going to be slightly different. So let's take a look at x is less than or equal to 8. Here's 8. I know that this would be 9, this would be 10, this would be, over here would be 7, would be 6. So x is less than or equal to 8 means that we want the numbers that are smaller than 8. So I'm going to be pointing towards 7, 6, 5, and all of those numbers that are smaller than 8. Except, because 8 is allowed to be a solution here, I have to color in my circle to show that 8 is also a possible answer. When I have this symbol with the line underneath showing greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, I have to color in my circle because that means I can choose that number as an answer. I have x is greater than or equal to 2. I'm going to put 2 on the number line. This would be 3, this would be 4, this would be 5, 1, 0, 
negative 1 if you want to get into the negatives. If x is greater than or equal to 2, that means x could be 2, it could be 3, it could be 4, but 2 is possible. So when I graph it, I'm not just going to circle 2, I'm going to color in 2 and then show that it's all the numbers that are bigger than 2 that are my possible solutions. I want you guys to pause the video real quick and try number 7 and 8 by yourself and then you can click play when you're done to check your answers. Okay, so x is less than or equal to 25. Let's check our answer. 25 We know that in this problem, 25 is a solution, so I'm going to color in my circle, not just circle it. i got to color it in to show that it's possible for x to be 25. Less than would be going to the left to show all the numbers that are smaller than 25. For x is greater than or equal to 100, I'm going to put 100 on my number line. Oop, 100. I need to color in my circle because 100 is a possible answer. X can equal 100 or it can be greater than 100. So I'm going to go to the right to show all the numbers that are bigger than 100. 101, 102, 103, 104, and so on. And then lastly, we have a couple problems here where I already filled in the graph and I need you to tell me what that inequality would be. Be careful about what kind of symbols that I used on that graph, whether I circled it or colored it in. So I would like for you to, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see them all. I would like for you to try writing an inequality for all of these right now. And when you're done, click play to check your answer. Okay, so for the first one, I see that negative 2 is circled. So negative 2 is definitely important here. And I need an x. So look at what numbers I colored in, I graphed. Did I graph the numbers that are bigger than negative 2 or the ones that are smaller than negative 2? Bigger. That means x has to be bigger than negative 2. So x is going to be greater than negative 2. Can x be equal to negative 2? No, because I didn't color it in. So I don't put the line underneath. That's my answer. For the second one, I see 19. So I'm going to put an x into 19. I just need to figure out what symbol goes in between. So did I draw an arrow pointing to the numbers that are bigger than 19 or the ones that are smaller? Pointed to the bigger ones. So x has to be greater than 19. Can x equal 19? Yes, because I colored in the circle. So my final answer is x is greater than or equal to 19. For the third one, the number that is circled is 49. So I'm going to put an x and a 49 here. So x can't equal 49 because I didn't color it in, I only circled it. And x is not greater because these are the greater numbers, so x has to be less than 49. x is less than 49 is my answer. Oh. And then for the last one, Hello. The number that is circled is negative 3. And actually, not only is it circled, it's colored in. So that means negative 3 can be an answer. So I'm going to put the little line underneath because I know already that we're going to have to include that. So now the arrow, is that pointing to the numbers that are greater than negative 3 or the numbers that are less than negative 3? Be careful. Negatives are tricky. They go backwards. All of these numbers here, these numbers are smaller than negative 3. So x has to be less than or equal to negative 3. That's my answer. Okay, so this was our introduction to inequalities. We'll be working with inequalities a little bit more this week. Um, thank you for watching my video. Let me know if you guys have any questions.